Welcome to Slayer Fest 98. I'm your host, Ian Carlos Crawford. And today joining me as my lovely co-host, I have he co-hosts My Bloody Judy with me. Zachary Patton Garcia. Hello, Zach. Oh my goodness. Collecting Slayer Fest appearances like infinity stones. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got uh we've got a bunch of cool guests here today. The first up, she played Margo in the Magi- Magicians. Oh, Summer Vishal. <laughs> I love it. And we've also got up writer and producer. Monica Owusu-Breen. Hello. I, I want the three of you to know how excited I was for this recording. Because, like, the three of you are fucking, like, great guests to have. All for, like, Faith's return and, like, the start of the end of Buffy. Uh... Monica, you haven't been on before to talk Buffy, so I'm really excited. Yes, this is very exciting. Monica and I have like literally been talking about her coming on since I think it was when I was doing season five, right? Uh, the before times. <laughs> <laughs> I met, we met in person, I think. Yes, um, yes. Yes. And that was also at the before times. Before times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, when when Monica, when you and I had lunch, I was like, oh, I don't want her to think I'm like this creepy fan. But then, like, you are so cool and chill. Like, I felt like we got along. Like, we right so away. did. And <laughs> here's the thing: I am a creepy fan. So, like, <laughs> I'm like, like people. Like, I don't. Yeah, no, I um, kind of love you that way. <laughs> <laughs> <Just not shows. laughs> um, yeah. Hey, I I could say that uh, it's uh, summer. I'm glad you also don't think I'm a creepy fan because you know I stand uh, <laughs> the magicians. I have a freaking magician's tattoo on my arm, and <laughs> you're very chill about I'm it. I'm a total fan girl too, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's um, like the not. It's like when shows don't have fans that kind of are super intense. You're like, what's going on? What's wrong? <laughs> yeah. I have all the like Buffy comics in there in my like curio cabinet. And when people come over, they're like, oh, wow, you're like really a fan. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I, 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 Summer, I love that you're like that big of a fan. Uh, <laughs> so weird. I'm, I see, I'm a creepy fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, but yeah. so, Monica, it is your first uh, appearance on a Buffy episode. Do you want to give us your Buffy origin story? Yes. It's, it's sort of funny because, um, Okay, I was I was supposed to be a professor of communications and I was getting my PhD and I remember in sociology Rodney, who I don't know where he's off to, but he was a really smart guy. He's like, You have got to watch this show. Buffy the Vampire. <laughs> it's doing some seriously important feminist work. And it's got the sickest love story ever. So I was like, All right, let me check it out. And that was it. <laughs> and and it was funny because like I would write about academic stuff, but I would never touch Buffy because it felt like I didn't want to take off the fun of it, you know, mm-hmm. like I didn't wanna. And then when I was writing my um PhD dissertation, me and my friend Allison, who was also writing her PhD dissertation, we moved up to LA and we were like, you know what? I'm bored. Let's write some scripts. So we started writing scripts <laughs> and we wrote a Buffy and it got us our first job. Really? Yes. Um, yes, it wow. got us. It got us staffed on Charmed. That is so cool. Wow. I, know. So I love like, that. I feel like I kind of owe the show a lot of my career, despite <laughs> not really knowing anyone in the industry at the time when I watched <laughs> it. But it was so kind of like, wait, I could write monsters and girls. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> where do you fall on? Uh, where do you fall on season seven? Yeah. It's super complicated. <laughs> That's a, everybody's got that answer. It's always a complicated relationship. It's complicated for so many reasons, one of which is like it is like an entirely different experience watching it now. It is. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. for, and we live in a different world, frankly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I also think it was an aberration. Like, I love the characters. I still love the characters. And I really appreciated where it ended. And I wept. So I don't want to, so even though my feelings are complicated, I still feel like it was a huge success and a really fucking loving end. Sorry, yeah. can I curse on this? What? Can I curse? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he gets fined a couple thousand every time. <laughs> yeah. 
I, people do ask that every time, Monica. <laughs> no, it's, it's well, it's funny. I'm working on um, Percy Jackson, which is fun, but like it, I don't, I can't curse in that right. room because it's, you know, they're kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just like ah, my cursiness. It's, yeah. <laughs> Well, also one, congratulations. I am looking, I, I read that series like a while ago. I mean, it, I was already an adult when it came out, but I'm very much looking forward to that series. Yeah, it'll be a fun one. Um, and I, I, we got to mention, uh, Monica, the, that you, uh, you, you can talk, talk about the thing that you know that um, I was going yeah, to bring no, up. I was, um, I guess five in the before times. Yes. I was hired to reboot Buffy. Um, I had had a character I loved and I loved the world of vampires and I wanted to put a new girl up with vampires. And so, but um, Hollywood being Hollywood and IP complications being what they are and a global pandemic and whatnot. And so like the, the project is in the ether. I don't know if anything will happen with it, Yeah, but I love, I love the story that's in my head. But, um, you know. If you want to just, like, turn this podcast into the story that's in your head, I'm okay with that. We can do that. (laughs) (laughs) Just go um, um, beat by beat for the season, please. Yeah, and just hire me, Zach, and Summer all to work on. We we can just do readings of what was in my head. Um, (laughs) Yeah, no, it was like, there's so many projects that come and go. And so, like, I just try and appreciate when I had a good story in my head and got to work with neat people. So that happened. And Um, I mean, I'm I'm completely under, like, Zach and I go through this a lot with, like, well, that sucked, but trying to, like, think, it is cool that you were the one picked for it. Like, that should be a nice ego boost. Oh, and I was super grateful because it came as a surprise. Oh, really? I was working with Gail Berman on another project. And I was like, I'm so excited to work with you because I'm a Buffy fan. Um, mm. And we just talk Buffy all the time. And she would keep asking me questions. But I didn't know. Oh, uh, so sneaky. I was jabbing <laughs> without knowing I was job interviewing. So when my agent calls, like, they want you for this. I'm like, wait, what? This is a thing? I didn't even know it was a thing. So it was pretty cool. Like, it was a, it was, because had I known it was a thing, I probably would have, like, overthought it and fucked right. it up. Right. I mean, listen. Monica, I, I the the funny thing that I got to say is how we met is that you found Slayer Fest and I asked you to come on before I even knew that you were going to be mm-hmm. in charge of a possible new Buffy and I I remember you were so like polite about it when I was like oh like you should come on I would love to have you on because like <laughs> I'm always looking for new people and like people who are in TV and I saw <laughs> your bio and you were like. I might have a busy summer, but I would love to. Can you circle back to me after the summer? And then, like a month <laughs> later, it was announced. <laughs> yeah, oh <my> gosh. <laughs> it was announced while I was at Comic Con, and then oh, I wild. went to Comic Con. Was it I intense? Was the uh, was the reaction from fans pretty intense? Yeah. Well, there was the release of like it's, she's going to be a black Buffy, which was mm-hmm. kind of like wasn't what it was going to be. Yeah. And um, then I had the weird experience of having to put out a statement, but yeah. I was, and and this is like, and I'm not sad about this. This is not a sad story. It's just sort of Monica's life is weird story where I was writing that statement and texting it back and forth to the board. I don't know who the board is, but like they were there <laughs> and they had to approve this message. And I was writing my father's eulogy at the same time. And Jesus. I was like, I don't know where to focus. <laughs> But like both of them felt less pressury because the other one, like literally opening both screens back and forth, back and forth, because they were due at the same time. So it was a very weird time. <laughs> Listen, if it, if it doesn't go ahead, we will. You tell us the actors you had in mind, and we will make a poster for it, and, yeah. and we will all have one. We'll send it to you, Summer, Ian. <laughs> we'll all have it. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, Monica, you are like super chill, super cool, and like just talking to you when we met for lunch, I was like, fuck, I really want this to happen. I'm like always rooting. Anytime someone. Because, you know, a lot of people are, like, dumb and don't actually... They'll be like, no, it's just doing Black Buffy. And I'm like, actually, that's not what... Like, I'm, like, the nerd <laughs> pushing up my glasses being like, actually, that's not what it is. <laughs> no. And, I mean, I got to be honest. Like, it's such an important show to me. Yeah. That I actually... Part of... It, it, 
Yeah, I didn't take it lightly. Yeah. It wasn't one of those, ah, let me just do my thing. No. Right. Um, I, I could totally – as Zach knows with me, oh my I get gosh, yeah. <laughs> I probably would never ever get over it. He would he would get fired because he would be going off on Twitter just way too much. And <laughs> Oh my god. Twitter is like I, I literally am like, if you have nothing nice to say, shut the fuck up, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Summer, you told me you do you still have most of it deleted off your phone, social media? I did, I did, and then I I, I brought it back on like recently, like a week ago. And lately, all I've been tweeting about is my like exploits with self tapes. <laughs> so it's like it's like safe enough. Like one tweet, I was like, I'm never taping again. <laughs> Every time, I'm like, this is it. And then I'm getting another job. Like that's always like that's always the thing with me. And then, like, eventually I work. Like, I've looked Mm. back on my career recently because I was really down. Because I'm like, it's so weird doing these self tapes. Like, I started acting when you went into rooms. Right. You know, and I'm somebody who comes, like, blossoms with direction and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Like, I've Mm. always been that way. Like, even on The Magicians, I would come to set with these crazy ideas. (laughs) And thankfully, like, they would appreciate it. But I was always eventually directed to something more in the world. Right. And that's how that's how I do well. And I love direction and even in rooms for auditions, like not on sets, that was always how I would eventually like get the job. And mm-hmm. so now I'm just like I'm basically just guessing blindfolded. <gasps> like and you know, I'm I I make weird choices. So I'm like, I, I think I may just look insane. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I find looking at auditions on tape really hard too, for the exact same reason that there's yeah. no interface, there's not even a hi. Like getting yeah. a energy. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's a <sighs> I know. I miss the old days. I know. I miss <laughs> the old days. Ago. I know. I know. <laughs> well, uh, Summer, I gotta you. You told you told me um, when we did our live and before recording that you did actually try to audition for to be a potential, right? Yes. Yeah, so I was taking acting classes at the school, and one of my teachers, who I really, really enjoyed uh, learning from, like he was basically like the teacher, like the first teacher I really had, who taught me a lot of like fundamentals and. Mm-hmm. You know, not just like audition technique, but like how to even like the first time I read a script was like with him as a teacher. And I just got really lucky that he was just really passionate about being an actor and Mm -hmm. was teaching in his spare time because it's like hard to get jobs and was just like teaching us all and really loved it. And that like passion kind of like wore off on all of us and he really cared. And I think he really thought that I was learning and could do work and you know believed in his students and like found out about this casting call because none of us had agents and was like um you should try to get seen on this and tried to like make it happen but I was so young honestly I don't even think I had officially like moved to the U.S. like I think this was on like a a, like a visit that I don't I don't remember exactly the details if I ended up going to the casting call or it didn't work out but I remember him really trying and there was this role and I wasn't represented, so it was like a little mm-hmm. difficult at that point. Cause that's like that's like very hard, right? To like book a like TV role without being represented. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, yeah. I got representation from that school, which is rare. Like, mm-hmm. apparently, it's not. I don't know. It worked for me, I guess. Hmm. I I gotta ask you then, which what potential would you have picked to be if like <laughs> which one would you have wanted to be? <laughs> oh my god! I mean, looking back, I was so like I felt so young, and I I was so young, even though I was mm. like probably like fourteen. I don't know how old I was. <laughs> I just probably would have been like one of the younger. Young one of the, one of the ones that like barely has a line. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> honestly, like, and that's all I could have probably handled. And honestly, because I was already such a fan, it probably would have like my head would have exploded. I would have been like having to wrap my head around not only like being in America, but like on the right. set of Buffy. Like, you know, <laughs> I couldn't have handled it. They're like, this is the potential that tells Buffy she loves her every five minutes. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I would not have been able to answer. So I, where do you uh where do you fall on season seven then? Yeah. I mean, I I loved the whole series for what it was. Like, I mean, I was like a huge fan. It has its flaws. It's a complicated 
rewatch, of course, in the world yeah. that we live in today and all the feelings that I have just as a human in the world today, mm-hmm. but also as an actress who is like di- of a diverse background watching it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I wish I wish there had been more representation mm-hmm. um, sooner um, and just more, um, mm-hmm. you know, so that's like there's all these complicated like emotions when I've rewatched it, but it did do so much as yeah. far as showing this like amazing female character that's still to this day of like if I'm feeling like kind of down if I were to rewatch it would be inspiring. Yeah. Like she was inspiring and I remember crying in, in the finale and like, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, a, it was an amazing show. Like you can't, you can't say otherwise, but it was flawed, but it was also, it was the times. Like, what are you, yeah. what are you going to do? Right. And it made, like, I feel like sometimes we need to think of things in their time yeah. because it allowed other shows to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Like that was one step. It wasn't the finish line. Yeah. It was one step. And so like just reminding myself like the where this show was in terms of a girl who could be a girl and also kick ass. Yeah. And it yeah. was a show that that created a lot of conversation in its time, but is still doing that, you know, today. Um, Mm -hmm. Even like, as we talk about looking back on it and, and, you know, picking out all of the things that were very of its time, like that's a whole conversation that, I mean, we're about to have, you know? Yeah. 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 And like, I, you know, there's a lot of shows that I do have trouble going back to from that period. And this show, yeah. I mean, clearly I started a freaking podcast about it. It's not, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, you can love something like, uh, like Will and Grace is a prime example for me. Like yeah. when that went on streaming, I was so excited to like finally revisit it. And there's like, they definitely do a lot of jokes where it's like, we're allowed to, we're a gay show. And it's like, but you're not. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, there there are yeah. like this show, it's still really satisfying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but okay, we are oh my god. Th- I I knew I was excited for a reason. We're like almost 20 minutes in. We haven't even discussed the episode yet, but like I've been loving this conversation. Makes me you're all making my heart happy today. Uh this is one of four recordings I'm doing today. <laughs> um so we're here to talk about Dirty Girls. It is very much the the kickoff to the finale. We're like oh, back, my back to back. Goodness. <laughs> and Zach, I know uh, you were excited for this episode. Too. Uh, this is going to be the coverage of Dirty Girls, aka Zach talking about how much he likes Faith and Eliza <laughs> Dish. <Dishabu, right>? Um <laughs> <laughs> and so when I all oh, when, when I think about this season, I used to so rewatching it as an adult. It um it is a little bit slower, and I see why it's slower now. But like back then, I guess I would just put my DVDs in and like maybe do the beginning of the season and then skip to this part because mm-hmm. from here to the end, it goes so fast. Yeah. And yeah, it all flows really, really well. Like this is this is what the pacing should have been like for for the yeah. season. Yeah, mm-hmm. we open on. This I actually I I was thinking of you when I was rewatching Zach. So Zach and I uh, have a horror podcast called My Bloody Judy together, and I felt like this opening was like I forgot that it's like kind of horror influence, right? It almost feels a little like it's Texas, creepy Texas Chainsaw Massacre, oh, where it's like this guy in a truck who like picks up a girl who's being attacked by monsters. Like that's what I was thinking of with this opening. Um, I do wish Shannon, since like she gets this big opening, I do wish she had been like a I don't even know if we see her again after this. Do episode. we see her again? Oh my gosh, I've never oh. thought about it. <laughs> she was There's, sad. She's like, you know, she has some. That's true. Well, like maybe she's like, oh, I'm good. You guys go to the school. I'll stay here in the hospital. Like I let you know. I let yeah. you know. <laughs> you call me when everything's good. <laughs> By the end of this episode, the hospital has fully given them a, a reserved wing <laughs> yes. in the hospital, you know? <laughs> um so what do we think of Caleb? Uh Zach, I'm I'm curious what you think of Caleb. Uh, I like Caleb a lot. I I mean I think it's because of the actor mainly. Like mm-hmm. he's he's so magnetic. Um, mm-hmm. As like the first right hand man, uh, I don't know if that I don't know if it works for me. You know, it 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 would seem that the first would want somebody maybe like a potential that they could kind of like sway a little mm-hmm. bit. And Caleb seems like somebody who's definitely you know 
on the side of ev- evil, but is like super clouded in his just ha- hatred for women, you know, and yeah. his, his quest for power. But um, I like him, you know, uh, maybe oh. wish they would have introduced him a little bit sooner. Monica, I'm curious what you think. I have so many mixed feelings about well, this character in specific, and I mm. realize why, because I'm like, why does it bug me this much? Because you're right. If it were uh, like, I love horror movies. And if it were yeah. a horror movie, I wouldn't have, it wouldn't just, and I realize monsters in the show are metaphors. Mm-hmm. And he's just an asshole who hates women. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, yeah. like he could have been in a horror movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, like it, he could have just been in a slasher movie and yes, he had power. But like that, and I'm also like a former Catholic, so the whole dirty girl thing bothered, you know, like mm-hmm. horror. Yeah. Um, so like it's a little triggering, but I think that's what bothered me is that I felt like all the villains always felt like metaphors for people in real life, and he just felt less a metaphor and just that guy with powers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah, uh, Summer, what do you think of him? What do you think of him? I mean, I, I, I kind of feel the same. Like he was just, he's, I mean, obviously he's super toxic and it's mm. like, you know, that whole like belief can be super triggering for mm. like most women. And I feel like it was for me, mm. like, like that just whole idea, you know, yeah. that you're like a dirty girl. I mean, you know, that's definitely something that like, I remember like being at war with myself over in my like young adulthood yeah, in a pretty like toxic and unhealthy way that like now looking back, I'm like, I can't believe I was having those conversations with myself, but like there, there was that conversation around like, like young females and their sexuality happening around me like that, like dirty girl thing, you know? So it's like, it's really like triggered, like as a woman. (laughs) And especially the guy. Yeah. One girl and says you're filthy because I want to fuck you. Like that's kind of <laughs> what it felt like. It's yeah. like a young girl saying, "Look at you, you're filthy," but you can't help it because you're stupid. But you're filthy. Yeah. And it's, ah, stop looking at her. She's a child. I know. I know. It was like super dark. <laughs> it was really dark. I think. Yeah. Fuck. And, and then it was like, and then burn and stab her. Like. I yeah. know. <laughs> God, you're such an asshole. It's a lot. This is this is one of the potentials that goes through it, you know, out of yeah. out of all of them. She's on screen less than five minutes and she yeah. is just brutalized, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I do think I agree with what y'all were saying. Like oh. I it, it's also I mean, we, we, we've said this a few times, like starting in season six a little bit and definitely in season seven, sometimes the subtext is just text at this point on the show, and that's yeah. kind of what he is. And I I do agree. It's like maybe if we it's so much so quickly with him where it's like, Oh, you whore. Oh, you're dirty. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And like the burning, the <laughs> yeah. stabbing, the throwing her out of the car. And it's like, yeah. Jesus. Like, I I just, I do feel like the good thing is that Nathan Fillion is even when he's playing a villain is like good, is like enjoyable. Oh, like so good. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I was oh. like, I don't want to say he's good. Cause I don't mean I like Kale, but like, right. He's a good actor. Like, oh, yeah. he, has a presence. Oh, and he delivers those lines about the gaping maw, like right. so well, like yeah. he's, he's a really good actor, which is why it's so triggering and horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think mean, you're right. It is like a credit to his acting. Um, yeah. So he throws Shannon out of the car and who pops up, Zachary? Well, Willow driving right, is, is Willow right behind him? Because this I cut is super right quick. So uh, there's a couple times throughout this episode that Willow needs to just like wave a finger and do something, you know, <laughs> pop, yeah. pop a tire, just pop a tire. That's all you need to do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Willow and Willow and Faith show up right behind her and uh, they, they rescue her and Faith is back in town. I I gotta say, I think this is a very good, like, reintroduction of Faith. Just like, Willow's like, we have to go to the hospital. She's, like, bleeding. And Faith's just like, well, I'm definitely back in Sunnydale. And And I don't know, um, Monica and Summer, I'm not sure if you watched when this was airing, but do you... I remember them counting, like, the commercials all being, like, Faith Returns, Eliza Nushu, and just being, like so excited for faith to come back oh, like so excited right I, I, it, I think i even i wasn't an angel fan but i think i even watched the angel before it you know monica that's funny because the reason i only casually watched angel 
until season four was when I like, then it became, oh, this is a show that I'm going to tape the same way I tape Buffy because yeah. I knew there was going to be a crossover. And I like mm-hmm. se- season four, even though it is definitely not the best, I do love those faith episodes of Angel. Mm-hmm. And like that kind of got me hooked on like watching Angel. And like, I then I that. caught up with the DVDs and whatever. Um, but yeah, same. I literally started obsessively watching Angel because I knew Faith was coming back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then they bring her to the hospital and post credits. Um, we get this scene at Xander's this, apartment. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Xander's apartment dream sequence. Okay. We've done a lot of we've done a lot of talk um about this season and the potentials being like they're all underage almost, right? Kennedy's the only one that we've really confirmed that she's at least over 18. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, these ones are not. And he's having yeah. this like creepy dream sequence, you know, about uh, I don't know. Did, did, we all, did we all notice though that that's Rachel Bilson playing the Slayer? Yes! With, like, yes! <laughs> she's like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> baby Rachel Wilson said you don't do that. Yeah, like dude, get away from him. <laughs> um, such a weird, a weird. I, I think that might have been one of her first like acting roles. Oh, wow. actually. Yeah. Uh, so we get Rachel Bilson and Dania Ramirez, who is in a lot of other stuff. Uh, I remember, I think she might have been in Heroes. She's in a couple other things. But her Slayer does pop up again. Rachel Bilson's does not. And yeah, we get, I, the only thing I can say that I like is I like that he wakes up to Rona being like, the toilet is clogged. Yes. To be like, yeah, get out of here with your stupid sex dream. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Um, the only the, the thing I was thinking, though, is why haven't they used Xander's place before? Because they have a lot of people in that house. And this is like the first time we see like, okay, some of them can sleep there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm, Hmm. Didn't notice that. Yeah. But so we cut to the hospital. I do like this Willow and Faith little discussion here because we hadn't really, basically they hadn't brought up Faith since she left the show. Like Mm -hmm. kind of out of sight, out of mind. Um, And Faith is kind of right, right? Like, oh, you. I loved that part. I loved the, Yeah. Speak on it, Monica. I loved when she said, oh, yeah, like, we thought you were safe. It's like, yeah, jail. (laughs) Also, right, like, what a stupid thing for Willow to say. (sighs) I I thought, I like that she shamed Willow. Yes. Yes. Because it was deserved, right? Faith's not being incorrect. Um, And I, I appreciate, like, I just appreciate us, like, catching up that way with, and Faith even mentions how on Angel she was attacked. And, like, I don't know. I I like shit like this where we're like catching up and there's a lot. I think that's why I like this episode so much too, because Faith, you know, she has this discussion with Willow and then goes to the graveyard and then she meets Dawn and Jet. Like I like a little bit of catch up with these characters and not pretending that everything's fine with them. Yeah. Yeah. I always loved her point of view on Mm -hmm. the Snoopy gang. So it was very appreciated at this moment. Yes. Yes. And it's like a very nice uh, breath of fresh air, right? Mm-hmm. And she folds in so easily, doesn't she? Like, it takes no time, and she feels like she's been on the show the entire season, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Summer, what do you think of Faith? I'm curious. I love Faith. I mean, like, at first, I was like, who is this girl? You know? <laughs> yeah. and, then you, and then you just love her. Um, yeah. And then, like, for a while, then you hate her again, right? Because she's, like, right. tur- she turns right. on all of them. But watching it as a grown woman, uh, mm. you de- you see more of her pain and you see more yes. of why she is the way she is, as opposed to like being a teenager and being like, she sucks and like, it's all about Buffy. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> Buffy, <"Buffy,"> you know, <laughs> that, that was how I felt as like a young person. But as a woman, I'm like, oh, it's great that they have this other, uh, you know, know version of a woman uh, as a young girl who didn't have the resources Buffy did, didn't have the support system Buffy did, because like we don't always, right? And and this is how it can look, but you can still ultimately then be a hero, but just in a different way. And and so like now as an adult, I'm really grateful for that portrayal. But as a kid, you just see like the basic like. The, the thin layer of like female competition, but it wasn't that. Yeah. It's so weird. Like how you see things as a young girl as, as, and then as an adult. And it's the same thing you're looking at just with a whole other lens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's true. I, I always say that like, as a kid, I actually like my, like the like closeted gay boy lie I would tell was that like, 
I had a crush on Faith and Buffy and I wanted to be Oz, but it was actually like, I had a crush on Oz and I wanted to be <laughs> Faith. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never, I never had a moment where I did not like Faith. I was always a Faith person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because I always, I love Buffy and it's an interesting love because sometimes Buffy was such a different, like, it was like she could have been the most popular cheerleader in school, but for having to slay vampires. And the cheerleader was never the character I associated with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when Buff, when Faith came in, I was like, oh, I get angry girl, though. I get mm-hmm. her. I get, yeah. I get this. This is how right. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and like, you know, I was like a shitty pop punk teen. So I felt like Faith was the more like alt punk girl, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but so okay so we get we get that scene and then she goes she's like i'm gonna go meet buffy i do really like this scene in the graveyard too she she like thinks Mm -hmm. spike is chasing this girl she doesn't recognize him at first just thinks he's like a random vampire and i was thinking i was like wait but she would know and then i was like oh no she wouldn't know he's good because she's been in jail she went to angel but like last time she was in sunnydale spike was still like kind of bad with the chip or whatever so she, I, the conversation they have here is pretty good. Uh, and I, I like when she says, please, you think I'm stupid? And he's like, well, yeah. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, Zachary, who comes in and punches Faith? And Buffy comes in and punches Faith and they have a little, you know, back and forth. Uh, she, she slays the vampire first, right? She catches mm-hmm. on. She's, you know, there's, there's a joke later about Faith being a little slow. Well, she catches mm-hmm. on and then they have, uh, this little back and forth or, or no, 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 no. First she says, uh. So are you bad slayer now? Am I good slayer now? Yeah. yeah. I love that because there's just, there's a little look she gives, like she's kind of excited to be good slayer now. Yeah. You know, just, just <laughs> hoping that Buffy's the bad one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Monica, what do you, what do you think of that convo? I also really love the idea that this episode and it was brought up in that scene of like, who's bad and who's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Because I do like, Buff, like it's interesting who Buffy cuts slap to and who she doesn't. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's a book in and of itself. Right? <laughs> exactly. Um, but it, it, it is you see a little bit of difference in thinking here because because these people. So uh, Faith is kind of still stuck back then, right? Where as the rest of them yeah. have obviously warmed to the idea that she has to come in, and they're not thinking of her so much as evil, right? Yeah. Um, they're just thinking of her as, as somebody who did, you know, a bunch of bad. But like faith is definitely still like good slayer, bad slayer mindset, and so that's yeah. interesting thinking of that contrast mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, and like the stunted growth, right? Because faith would be a little bit more stunted than the rest of them would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's that's a thing that like same thing with you, Summer. I felt like throughout even just doing this podcast, I felt differently about Faith yeah. each time. Yeah. Um, and I will say, like, season seven has hit differently. Every like, if you date me, you have to watch Buffy. So like, I've made many a man watch go through all of <laughs> Buffy with me. <laughs> um, or even if you're just a roommate that I have, I make you go through all of Buffy. Um, <laughs> And almost every time season seven, I feel differently, whether I'm like, Buffy yeah. is kind of being an asshole or like, no, yeah. everyone else is being an asshole. Um, and I will say this viewing, I kind of feel in the middle where I'm very like, I can see why everyone's pissed at Buffy, but also please give Buffy a break. She is very stressed. Like, mm-hmm. yes. you know, and, and I, I've been feeling that way about Faith too, where like, she does, you know, she does kill someone, but like, we see that like, when she's like, you don't get it. I don't care. In that season three episode, like she's clearly lying. She's just puffing her chest to be like, no, I don't care. I'm too tough for this in almost the same way. Like Spike does shit, right? Where he's like, no, 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 I don't have these feelings, but we know he's like a tender poet. Mm -hmm. Um, So I always feel bad for that. Like that character is a character that like, I'm never going to be a hundred percent mad at because I'm like, well, right. well, and the way yeah. they ch- kind of talk about her and treat her when, when she wakes up from her coma, like I know there's that moment where she's watching through the window and she hears them kind of bad mouthing her. And then she walks away and they say something nice, but they didn't say n- something nice enough. Right. And then when they right. see her, it's like on site, you know, like nobody really takes the time to try to get mm-hmm. her to like sit, buy her a damn coffee, like sit her down, get yeah. her a meal, a, you know, happy meal or something. Um, everybody's just like, you know, this, She's murderous, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the thing that Faith 
does well as uh, like a character are the things that Spike and Anya do well, even Cordelia, yes. where like they yeah. are kind of, even though they know these people, they're still a little bit enough on the outside that they can like completely read them all and be correct, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I always think those characters are like very interesting. Um, the character that's like a little bit, I mean, Summer, not unlike a character you play, like Margot, right. like could have read the room, all of them for filth, right? And she right. might have been harsh, but it would have been correct. Oh, for mm-hmm. sure. For sure. And like, I think that those are characters I like and I gravitate towards. I do too. Yeah. There's a truth telling quality that they don't, the cynicism also is very truthful. Yes. Yes. That. We're yeah. like, one could say that's what it is, but it's not just that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so we get, we get that and then they, uh, <laughs> they, I, I do like when she <laughs> go ahead Zach <laughs> they, they, they just they take faith to the summer's house and I get it I get that like Dawn has the memory thing right she has these memories and all that but not in any of your three years have you ever met this woman so I just laugh every time seeing like Dawn angry yeah, about it like- and then I think about it I'm like where so where was Dawn during all of these little moments right like, what was Dawn doing <laughs> you know yeah. When we did the first four seasons, uh, I think I wish I had done it the entire time, but I think I started in season three. I would ask, <laughs> yes, what do you think Dawn would have been doing in this episode? <laughs> and like, I do yeah. think about that a lot. Like, like what is what does she remember? Like, was she tied up next to her mom on that bed when Faith like came to the house? <laughs> yeah, what was her memory? Yeah, she's putting on the lipstick too. She was, yeah. you know, playing with the darkness a little bit. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so Dawn is clearly not happy. Um, but then we get Spike kind of pulls Faith aside to let her know kind of what's been going on. And he's like, you know, it's not just all you. Giles tried to plot to kill me. And I do really like Faith's line of like, well, that makes me feel better about me. Worse about Giles, kind of shaky about you with Spike. Yeah, I love that line. Yeah. And I gotta say, I think Spike and Faith have like very good chemistry. Like they're yeah. crazy good. Right, right. Okay. I was like, am I just like <laughs> this this was a missed opportunity? Yes. I yeah. know, like I didn't know I needed them as a couple. And yeah. I- until they were together. Well, they tried to play the angel and faith what if so much, right? But like yeah, this right. is the one that works. This is the yeah. one that like it's instant chemistry. Yeah, and I I yeah, I just I I think like it's like it's almost weird. <laughs> it's going to sound like ridiculous, but it's almost like they have chemistry, but I don't even know that I would say it's like, maybe it is. I don't know. Cause faith is just so her energy to me is always like very like soft butch top. <laughs> and I, so it almost feels like that's what her and spike both are. And it's almost like, too, yeah, like, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, but he's got this 10 tender underbelly. That yeah. I feel like would come out during sex. Yeah, especially with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm so glad you said it. And I was like, am I going to be the horny sounding one? Like, ugh, again. No, no, no. I'm like, why are you talking, Monica? Stop talking. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I um, I like those two together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's wild to think that like Eliza Dushtru and James Marsters hadn't had a scene together before this. Mm. Right? Yes. Um, so weird like the so weird but they fit so well together yeah i mean but you know faith faith is kind of like buffy's ex so it makes sense that yeah. that's like oh, absolutely. <laughs> faith, is, faith is buffy's ex we're gonna yeah. count that canon <laughs> so then we get a little bit more of caleb he these are the things where i'm like i really don't need this where he's like pouring wine and like kind of quoting the bible and like yeah because they're doing so much just in one episode, right? There was no build up to all of this, and like all of a sudden, like Caleb is 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 the right hand man of, of the first, and like you know they they have these conversations, and it's it's all it's a lot just yeah. for one episode. And, and, okay, you're the right hand of the first evil, like that's a big old deal. Yeah, and then he's still just talking about like they're like killing chicks. Yeah, like, yeah. literally boring him with stories of killing women, like. <laughs> I mean, I feel like he'd have bigger fish to fry. Yeah, <laughs> and he's just too—he's cl- too clouded to be the the first right <laughs> hand. Know. Like it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the first is thinking, let me pick someone who hates women because <laughs> all the same are women. <laughs> so, um, this guy. 
<laughs> it does seem like, like, dude, you have a one track mind here. We're talking about other things. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> Stop saying whores. We're talking about killing the Slayer line. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, the, these are the and like Monica, you write for TV. Like, what it, is? Do you feel like it is necessary to like show us a little bit more of his character, or do you think we could have like kind of cut this stuff out? I mean, I just wish he had more to say than just by <laughs> Like, mm. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, he could yeah. have been in the serial killer movie. True. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have been drinking wine in the basement of a church and killing nuns. And killing and nuns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he would hate the nuns, but then in my mind, I was like, "Oh, well, he does. Of course, there. he does." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's what, and it's so funny because he's so good. But I'm like, why am I here? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone's talking about the end of times. <laughs> He's talking about the horse. <laughs> yeah, and like, right? It's like we're so close to the end that I'm like, don't waste, don't waste any time with me, like showing me a new character. Like, wow. yeah, eh, just like keep moving. Um, so, oh, and he did set up something that I I will talk about later. But he talked about like women's first sin being curiosity. Mm. which is always like an awful thing to like, it bugs me about Christianity to be honest, but it also like mm-hmm. bugs me in the sense that that's what he work. That's his plan is mm. to capitalize on her curiosity. And I hate that it works. Right. Yeah. It fucking yeah. sucks that it works. It works. Like, it yeah. me off. like here's the apple. Come get the apple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but I do, I will say I love Andrew's like recap of faith. I think it's like so a, much. Very so charming. Much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like his little intro video about her. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then when she was fighting the and she's in Star Trek, I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> for another hour. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like give me an episode of Andrew recapping like all the Buffy characters. Yes. <laughs> um Mixed worlds. I love that idea. Yeah, I yes, I I I remember like very much being like a very excited fan when like the, I was like, oh my god, it's Star Trek and it's Buffy. Like I also <laughs> love Amanda being like, uh, I thought Faith killed a volcanologist. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew is just like the nervous ditzy gay fanboy that I feel seen on screen. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh but he does he's kind of like, you know, well she's a killer and it's like, all right Andrew, but you too, sir. You too. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz there's that there's that moment in one of the earlier season 7 episodes where Andrew says Full disclosure, almost everyone in Buffy's gang has killed someone at one point, and it's true. Yeah, put a tally on the refrigerator, because it's yeah. not anything rare. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> God. Uh, and we end on, like, Chow Ann says, there's a girl doing uh, gymnastics in the backyard, and it's just, like, faith training. Um, Poor Chow Ann, because nobody's translating for her throughout no, this whole thing. Like, how prepared knows. is she? Yeah. I feel like this is one of those things where we won't, we don't do that now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where yes. the joke is the Asian one doesn't speak English and no yeah. one will ever talk to her. Yeah. 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 That, I worked for me, with that's that like, girl. I worked with her. Oh, really? Yeah. On Return of Halloween Town. And it's like the one that they're always like, oh, she doesn't understand any English. Yeah. Yeah. Huh, and I'm funny, like, she understands English just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Summer better than like, most. Act- <laughs> actually, you racist. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know it was so uh, cringeworthy, and probably because I I I met her. Like, like I right. went on to oh, work yeah. with her. So you're yeah. like, oh. uh, <laughs> so we we cut back to Sunnydale High. Buffy and Robin kind of. I noticed this episode does. And I, I was wondering uh, your perspective, Monica, as a TV writer. Do you think they do a lot of these recaps just in case because it is the end? If like viewers who hadn't been yeah. keeping up, I like, okay. I mean, I worked for the was it the C? I I forgot, but like I, I there was like this idea that like you just have to catch everyone up all the time. <laughs> like, it it's was um, just five minutes ago. It's exhausting. Exhausting. Um, yeah, there was just like a very funny sort of attitude of like, how will the audience know where they are in the plot? <laughs> and like, literally, Robin and Buffy are 
recapping what just happened in the previous episode. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like this scene. I am like, so we just, I just recorded for lies. My parents told me that just came out last week. I, I go back and forth. Like I feel bad for Robin, but also I'm like, please don't give Buffy more shit. Like she does not need you. But, but to be fair, let's speak just for him for a second. Right. His whole life is, has been leading to a moment where he gets some catharsis. Right. And like, this was it for him, but I appreciate that in this moment, he understands the bigger picture and it's yes. not some big thing between them. Right. Yes. He's not going to like have this chip on his shoulder. He's not going to be angry. He gets a little bit of revenge and getting to fire her. And then that's it. Right. And then yeah. they, they kind of move on, but like he got to beat up spike a little bit. So good for him. Yeah. Yeah. That was a hard, I don't know why that character made me sad. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I felt like he quite like, I should have cared more. About his vendetta. <laughs> I did, but, I, but I did care. But I was like, if I were to care, I'd be mad at the way he's being treated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's what I go back to. It's like, okay, like I do understand that Spike. It's funny, you know, just uh, I've been recording with my mom, who's the one that got me into Buffy. She's 75. And we were, we were recording about lies my parents told me. And my mom, to her, she loves Buffy and Spike. They can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. She was like, Buffy is going to war. This She doesn't have time for this, so I'm on her side. Um, and like, she was like, but also I understand as a Puerto Rican, we hold grudges forever. So also yes. I would still hold that crime. <laughs> 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 um, so I, yeah, I do go back and forth, but I am glad that they're kind of just like, we're smoothing this problem over. We're, yeah. we're good. Yeah. Like, because I, I didn't need this to be like a lingering plot for the rest of the season right like no you would have hated him yes yeah if he's like still thinking of killing spike during the finale battle it would have been like this fucking asshole, yeah because they could have easily done that right where he yeah. like kind of goes mm -hmm. off on his own to try to like follow spike into some dark corner or something right. i don't know and i'm glad that i, I really <laughs> did i appreciate them like being very mature about it. hey we gotta yes. go yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and like you said, Zach, he does get a little bit of wrench as he does it to say, also you're fire. <laughs> he gets to do it twice, man. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then, then where do we go? So, oh, then uh, he also, he we, also ends by giving her some not great advice in the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was, what was the advice he gives her? We should test the potential. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. basically, basically puts the sea like any 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 first battle that comes up after this is the one they're going into, right? So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it they're was like, they're not ready. It's like, well, you should test them. It's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should uh, test these unprepared teenage girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, we we do cut to uh, Faith going down to the basement to kind of get away from all the girls, and her and Spike have a little chit chat. I love them being the. The kind of outcasts that yeah. are kind of, you know, the baddies who are having a conversation basically in hell, right? Like away from everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Summer, what do you think of this scene with them? Um, with the – with Spike and – yeah, Faith. I yeah, mean yeah. – with Spike and Faith? Yeah, yeah. It's them and he goes – she goes down to the basement. Yeah, know, like I think they stuff. had like amazing chemistry. When you guys were saying that was the first time they appeared together, like I had to think for a minute. I'm like, wait, I'm sure they have. <laughs> so I can't believe that they didn't explore that because it was, like Monica said, just such a missed opportunity. Like it yeah. would have just been such great television to watch them together. Um, but then also I like I like where it went. Like I like that it didn't immediately – become about yeah. like how great it would be to like see them fucking like it was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a more interesting exchange um and then just like i'm also like kind of a geek for how um how like how vampires are presented because they're presented so differently in each like show or movie and like yeah. Yeah. there's different elements about them right and so mm. he has that little moment where he's like well we don't get the, she goes, you, the big C is not something to worry about. And he's like, yeah, but the teeth get really yellow. So like, just as a door, <laughs> I love when they, when they give us more information on how they see these creatures and what their physical, yeah. you know, abilities yeah. or traits are. Um, I really like, um, like that, like dorky stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was an interesting scene. I would have liked to see them explore more of a relationship. I think it made way more sense than the angel faith thing that felt kind of mm -hmm. forced. 
yeah. Uh, yeah. to be honest. Um, but then, you know, talking about like the principle and the grudge he held against Spike, because you guys were mm. talking about that a little bit. Like, I would have been annoyed as an audience member if that had continued. But at the same right. time, like Spike like fucking killed not only his mother, but like a slayer. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah. fuck Spike. Like, we forgive Spike so much shit. It's yeah. like because he's cute and he's yeah. cute. Exactly. And, and wears a, a tight black t shirt, you know. <laughs> I, I love Spike. And I'm like, why do I fucking like this character so much? Like, <laughs> it's like, feels like part of me worries when I like him too much. Like, I'm like, I, know. Do I hate myself. Like, yeah. is this one? Because yeah. I feel like he's. He's like the one you want to fix, but like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. He's the one you're taking trips down to the high school basement for, right? It's yeah. just, it, that's you shouldn't be doing it. He shouldn't be on the show no more. He should be dusted in be season two. Chain. They chain him up, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, he's the yeah. But I did love when Faith found out that Buffy and he were a thing. That she yeah. was impressed that Buffy got her freak on. Yeah, like, yeah. I, yeah, I'm just proud of her. Like, ah, all right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, I do love that uh, when he's like, when she says, like, just don't forget who's on top, and he says that I suspect would be you, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, I fucked it. Of course, Faith is yeah. the top. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, and also, and also, um, he referred back to that line that she told him that um, I had forgotten about. About the squeezing him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Warm champagne. <laughs> My goodness. I, I, <laughs> that is a good line. It's a good. It's a, it, it's like a good. It's a memorable uh, line then, and yeah. it was a memorable callback. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So then Buffy comes down to the basement and I love the line Faith has of, you know, all the cool vampires. Like, I think it's such a good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they, they go to the hospital. They, they, you know, Shannon kind of tells them what happened, shows them the burn. Um, and then Buffy calls a meeting, right? And she tells everyone what's happening. She says she's tired of talking, tired of training. We're going to attack. And, you know, I hadn't even thought about it, Monica, but. I wrote like a note, like I get it, but also maybe not the best idea, but you're right. It's that's what principal Wood told her. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's just, it was a really bad idea and yeah. everyone who warned her against it was right. I but know, she but just, I it, it does. I wish she had, had something of hers. Yeah. I yes. actually wish she had had something of hers. So it didn't right. seem like the stupidest plan of all time. The class protector <laughs> umbrella. Like she's yeah, got to sure. go get that. She's yeah. got to go back and get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it track, you know, it, it tracks a little bit for her because she is so tired. Of, she's like really kind of annoyed at listening to anybody else in her, yes. in her circle. Right. And Robin Wood is the one that's kind of outside the circle, but still in the circle. And yeah. so, like if she's going to take advice from anybody it would be him rather like she slammed the door in Giles's face last mm -hmm. episode. So um, it tracks it just, it was yeah. Awful advice. Uh, so yeah. And like her and Giles have, and like, so I go back and forth with Giles because yes. I am a little annoyed with him in the previous episode, but Terrible. Yeah, yeah. But like, usually he is in the right most of the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And, like, usually he is a very good, supportive, like, father yes. figure for Buffy. So when they had the argument, he's, she's like, he has, such, like, it could be a girl. And he's like, it could be a stapler. Like you said, Monica, it ends up being nothing. <laughs> it's not even a stapler. Like, it is worse. It's like, you brought your thing to me. Yeah. So now I have it. <laughs> <laughs> like, at least make it a stapler, Jesus. And <laughs> so, like. I, this is where I under, this is where I go back and forth, especially at a moment like this, you know, mm -hmm. Zach and I talked about her speech in, um, get it done when she, when Chloe, uh, dies by suicide and she's like, she was an idiot and she's very harsh. This is one of those moments where I'm like, Oh, B, please just like a little bit. Listen to these people. Like, <laughs> right. yeah, uh, I felt like, you know, it's interesting. She felt like she was acting like a boy at that moment. Mm. I could and see she was that. like, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm gonna go. I'm Ready gonna to go in. And you're like, but he's taunting you. You admitted he's taunting you. 
it. <laughs> but also, why doesn't Willow just try a spell to kind of like like a little invisible drone or something? She can't make one of those to like go in there and see what's going on. Like something to kind of like crystal ball. Do we not have one of those just lying <laughs> around somewhere? It was, it was yeah. It was because just, everybody uh, tells her it's a trap, but nobody really like offers up alternatives either. Right. right. And it, I mean, they definitely like play fast and loose at the end here with like Willow's magic because it's like, oh, she's still not doing magic, but sometimes she'll do magic. But like, she's not really doing it. But like, when we need her to, she will. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Summer, what, what do you think about Buffy's decision making in this? I mean, it's always hard to see people like question her because you mm. start like over the years, you start like you can't, you can't help but like, over almost like over identify with who you're supposed to like identify with and like yeah. the role. Um, so you're just like, I mean, I don't, I didn't like seeing that. And it's like, I, it's kind of like you said, like sometimes I'm like, I get it. She's being an asshole. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's like, no, you're being assholes. Um, so it's tough. It's like, I mean, they're all kind of making mistakes. Yeah. Really. I mean, nobody knows what they're doing. They're all kind right. of flying <laughs> blind. Exactly. Yes. And this, That's yeah. And the idea that there is like a, ch a, that the chosen one thing is, is problematic suddenly at the end is a lot to like wrap your head around, but it's also genius that they entertain that and presented that. Yeah. Yeah, it, right. It is. After seven seasons, it's hard to be like, yeah. But, we, but we've been doing, like, why are we now making this a problem? Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. like, wait, her right. her specialness was what the show was about. And now you're saying that that's actually not. Um, right. right. Or yeah. we can all be special. Exactly. Right. Which is like an amazing idea. But at first, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's like it had to happen at the end. It had yeah. to. It, it had, had to. to. And you're like, I could be Buffy too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's also <laughs> fucked up what they do to Willow as far because like magic was treated like she had we had a serious like right. addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm like, you're messing with an addict. You're like basically like waging psychological warfare on her. <laughs> it's true. Like, oh Jesus. my god. It's so funny though, because I didn't buy the magic as addict. No. So yeah. I was glad that too, because I'm like, why can't she just have power in this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, what do you mean all or nothing? Yeah. Yeah. That for me, that's like one of the one of the plot points that I'm just like, I don't really like I, I pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> like if it's not if we're yeah. not talking about it on screen, I'm just like, great, I'm gonna pretend that doesn't exist. Cause yeah, it the metaphor of like yeah, it felt her life-saving power is her it's like <laughs> I mean, it being addicted to power. Right. That you get from it. But that's not what it was played like. No. It was played like the magic was drugs, right? Like, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's why the like doesn't quite add up when it's like, oh, but she saves people with those quote unquote drugs. Like, no, but I love, I, but I love Magical Willow and I like her having this power. So yeah. I'm yeah. like always about bringing it back. Yes. But you're right. If we're going to take it seriously as a drug addiction, not cool friends. Yeah. 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 Is she still right. doing right. magic throughout the season? Like they're letting her do it in little doses still. So then yeah. if she can do that, then she can, she can do a little something to kind of spy on yeah. right. what's going on here and try to figure out this trap. Um, yeah. And yeah. it's interesting because sometimes I feel like it's like, I get what was, I get what the show, like you want, your hero to have a big loss before they have the enormous win. I get right. that. Yeah, yeah. And all I wish is that she hadn't been so petulant and going. Yes. Yes. Or or like you said, he did end up having something of hers. Yeah. yeah. Like just something so that it wasn't just a trap that she fell into because women are curious. Right. And mm -hmm. this is being falling into my like sort of academic overthinking. So do I, you I also love, do you also that. do you also think um that maybe she was trying to look like a leader in front of Faith, because this is her first show of leadership in front of Faith. Yeah. Right. Oh. Zach, that's a really good point. I hadn't even a really good point. thought of that. Uh, which also does lead us to, I really like this scene of Faith and Buffy, like kind of following the bringer just yes. by themselves. I love mm -hmm. them together. Yes. I like. <laughs> like two feet from the damn bringer. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> but I, I love this catch up. I love when she's like, oh, I, Willow says you, you helped Angel. And like, mm -hmm. they're kind of talking about that. And like, yeah. 
I don't know. I this is this is shit I love on this show, right? Like, of course, I love when they're like kicking ass, but I I like the dynamics and this. I think I want to say this is one of the few beats, like you know, Faith's in five episodes, but there's so much going on. She doesn't get a lot of mm-hmm. screen time, and I like like us kind of like seeing that like Buffy is she's still being aggressive with her, and I, I do think it's kind of what you said, Zach. I was thinking about that. I was like, she is being aggressive here, mm-hmm. but. She does mean it when she says, no, I'm glad you're here. Even though she, like, pains her to say it, she yeah. does mean it. No, it was also interesting to see that Faith seemed a little more mature yeah. that moment as well. Like, it was like mm-hmm. Faith was the one who understood that the girls had potential, but they were really green. Mm. And she was the one who felt like she had grown up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. In that exchange. And when... Yeah, I really like them. I wanted them to be better friends. Yes. Well, that's what I was going to say is that I, I always forget who said it on your podcast, Ian, that um, it feels more like if we'd followed these characters afterwards, not just in the comics, but like, you know, I don't know if we caught up with them now, it would – I almost feel like Buffy and Faith would have found a pretty good friendship. Yeah. And mm-hmm. she – Buffy might have like drifted away from the other ones. Not yeah. out of, you know, anything host, – no, no big argument or anything. It's just – I, I don't see the high school friends having stayed friends yeah. as close um, right. outside of Sunnydale, right. but yeah. but Buffy and Faith really have this shared understanding that goes beyond everything, and I think they could have been like you know really good duo going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Summer, how do you feel about Faith? I, I did I ask? I already asked you that. Never mind. I, was yeah. like, <laughs> I mean, it's so complicated though because, like, hearing you guys say that, it would have been more interesting to explore a friendship with them. Like, that would have been yeah. more complex and compelling, and 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 more interesting, and probably something that would have been explored more today. Yeah. Because yeah. there was, yes, yeah, because there probably would have been more women in the writers' room being like, I don't know, <laughs> what if they don't fucking hate each other and they're not <laughs> fighting over yeah. a guy? <laughs> and at some point, right, like beyond season seven, you drop the whole yeah. everybody side eyeing Faith for her season three past, right? Like everybody yeah. would forget that. And like, I mean, if we're tracking, you know, forgetting how people have murdered people, right? Um, like, oh my god, yeah, they would get over it beyond season seven. And I wish that we had gotten to see them get over it and Faith get to yes. like actually come into the group. Yeah, because yeah. we got over so much with Spike and other male characters in this show. But yeah. with Faith, it's oh, like, gosh. oh, my God, when you yeah. were a bad girl. I like, wish Faith still had that damn knife, too. I wish she just, like, brandished it at some of the potentials every Ooh, now yeah. and then, you know. <laughs> I just, know. Like, scared him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Zach, I would have loved if that was, like, her weapon that she fought with. It would be so season. funny, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... We get back to the we go back to the summer's house where everyone's like kind of freaking out. A thing that I only noticed in this watch is the potential slayer Molly has had disappeared for like the yeah. last three episodes and only reappears. They like make sure to focus on her to be like, remember this character for when she dies in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but so I uh, this is a thing I don't say often on this podcast, but I do think Xander is right here, even though it's misguided when he's like he, I wrote it down. He says, like, I'm telling you right now, she cares more about your lives than you will ever know. Right. Uh, and he is right. Like, right. Like, I understand they are all kind of right about why is Buffy being so rash. But the, the, the potentials, I've been thinking about it more when going through the uh, season with my mom because my mom hates the potentials. Kennedy oh is God, the only one she re- she remotely likes, but she's like, oh, none of them like stand up. They don't blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they, the way they talk to Buffy and like. I do feel like the potentials needed someone to be like, you really like don't appreciate what Buffy's doing. Um, but right? like the potentials are so confused. Their heads yeah. are just spinning in this whole situation because there's no real road that they're on. Like they are just kind of in this house sometimes every now and then having a lesson in the backyard, but like what else are they are they doing and where are they going? You know? Yeah. yeah. And where are they all like, Pooping. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's what pisses me off the most. Not yeah. at Xander's house. It's it's flooded at Xander's house. It's just like they're sharing this bathroom. Like, I how many bedrooms did this house have? <laughs> I like the logistical questions. You know what? Oh, yeah. Xander, Xander could have stolen a uh, then you're like, your parents upset that all the teen girls have gone missing, but oh, no one <laughs> 
<laughs> Summer, I always think that in movies or like shows where it's like, yeah. oh, they're they're like they're they're all staying in this one spot, and I'm like, yeah. where's everyone going to the bathroom? But like, it's, I, I'm all the yeah. time thinking about the money situation. Like, where 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 is the Watchers Council money? Um, right. It's somewhere. It's in a bank account somewhere, but like they don't have it here. Um, I, know. I don't know the logistical stuff. But it's funny. Like I remember when Buffy got a job. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want her working. I actually don't need her to earn a living. No. I yes, know. No. I know. <laughs> she I is my sad life. I don't want her to <laughs> exactly. Oh she's God, she's funny. definitely owed back pay from that damn Watchers Council. Oh like oh, like, where yeah. is that money? <laughs> yeah, right. Monica, I I live my sad life. I don't need to see. <laughs> no, that's, like, that's why I'm cool with eliminating bathroom top and bills. <laughs> Like <laughs> as as someone whose day job is retail, I feel that so hard. <laughs> uh, but so I I gotta point out Andrew again being me when he's the one crying at Xander's speech. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. It was a very good speech. It was. It was. And I I do like that Faith and Buffy had walked in and she's like, "Damn, I never knew you were that cool." And Buffy's like, "You always were a little slow." Like I, I that's the interactions that I love between 100%. them. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah, where they do. It's almost like you can tell there's like animosity there, but like there's also love. It's almost like they're that's like sisters, fact, right? Yeah. Respect. Well, yeah. Buffy just seems more tired. Like she's she's too tired to have yeah. any sort of grudge right this second. You know, yeah. like she's been dealing with a lot of shit this season. Yeah, they all look great this episode, though. I want to do a quick side like, note. Like her beautifully in this yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then the gang goes to the vineyard where they found the bringer. Um, everything quickly goes to shit. Uh, the bringers attack them. I got to say, I feel like. Oftentimes, especially in Buffy, but I feel like this is probably true for a lot of shows. Mm-hmm. There's like a set piece that they do where it's like, oh, they that was like a predecessor to the bigger set piece. And it almost feels like this was like the predecessor to the chosen battle. Cause I don't know. Yes. And I you're all huge Buffy like nerd fans like me. So I, I couldn't think of another moment in Buffy when there's that many people fighting that wasn't a finale, wasn't graduation day. Yes. Like, I don't right. I don't think there is. I don't think so. I think this is like the biggest battle and the biggest loss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I like, I think putting it in a, a vineyard work because I do like every time someone's like thrown into a barrel oh, and the yeah. wine explodes. That's like, good. I think it looks cool. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it also feels like almost bigger than the Buffy fight. Like when Faith gets like kicked. And she's like, does a twirl in the air and then hits the thing and yes. it explodes. Like, we hadn't really seen something like that on Buffy before. Yeah. We got the wires out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely got the wires out. <laughs> Which the costume designer did tell me what a pain that was because they had to have the like wet outfits that like were stained and then the regular oh, outfits. Hey, the wine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it goes. I, I don't know. Uh, Summer, what do you think of the fight? I mean, it's fucking, it's awful to watch them all fail so miserably. It's just like scary. Yeah. And it just sets you up for the belief that there's no way they're going to win. Yes. Yes. It's just you know, so hard to watch. You're like, how are they ever going to win? Oh, I, I can, so I watch. can remember watching the scene where like Caleb's, uh, he said something like, oh, the Slayer must be powerful. And then he just like knocks Buffy across the room and thinking, oh, this is like glory. Fuck. And like, yes. it didn't go well with glory, right? Like she won, but not in the best way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I remember thinking of that when I watched this being like, oh shit, like no one, the only person that threw her around like that was Glory and she died, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. She did die. Yeah. And even, I gotta say, Rona, who like, you know, she was the most like, uh, she wasn't a potential I cared about, but even seeing her, mm-hmm. like the way he grabs her and breaks yes. her arm and her scream, it's like, oh shit. Yeah. No, that was, that was really powerful. Yeah. Yes. Like I loved the fight when they were fighting. Mm-hmm. It did have. I don't like when people speechify too much during a fight because okay. I always wonder why is it anyone jet, like running at that? <laughs> <laughs> there can be people just standing there. Exactly. <laughs> he's been on for a while speechifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I know. It's like, what the fuck? Like someone hit him from behind. I, I, I wish there would have been a, there would have been a fight between Buffy and Faith and Caleb. Like Buffy and Ooh. Faith team up to fight Caleb. Yeah, we never got anything like that. It would make sense because you know that they're both slayers. That would make more sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dragging them all through it. Yeah, and it, it almost feels like. Yeah, I feel like maybe together they would have like done way more damage to him or like been at least a bigger threat than him just knocking yes. Buffy across the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um I do like that Faith has those two knives. I think that's cool that she like pulls yes. them out. That is cool. <laughs> uh so yeah, they have this like it's like goes on for a while and I do think it's like well choreographed and looks really yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Um and like, you know, even Kennedy who's clearly the best fighter of the potentials gets like her ass kicked. Yeah. Um, and even again, he breaks Rona's arm and then he goes and gets, he kills a no name potential, which does feel a little cheap, yeah. um, but he then goes to Molly. Right. And the way okay. he just like, that lifts was her up yeah. and kills her. My God. Yeah. So mean. Yeah. Like it's, and it's such a, vi- like the show has such like sort of, I mean, it's stylized violence usually like yeah. poof, like so it was it's it's intense watching a girl gutted like that yeah, yeah. it yeah. feels different and the eye felt yeah, yeah. different monica you know what you just put that you like nailed why because i was thinking that this felt more violent than usual even though it's mm-hmm. like it's not like you know it's not like he stabs her and blood explodes or whatever but i think you're right it's like most of they're just like either it's like a monster that barely like okay she stabbed mm-hmm. the monster mm-hmm. or like turns the dust but this is like no we're watching like human after human get like an arm broken yes. a stab wound like yeah and, and ways that humans die right yeah yeah not, not like a supernatural portal or something exactly it's, yeah and so he, it just felt more violent yeah. yeah and he like walks up to her so slowly too and like nobody's on him nobody tries nobody yeah. and molly's just you know didn't have a chance yeah yeah and i mean you know then we gotta spike tells buffy they gotta leave and ooh, i will say again xander a character that is probably one of my least favorite like watching him get his eye gouged out hurts. horrible it hurts right like yeah fuck. oh god so and it's funny too because i was thinking i that beginning dream bugged me mm-hmm. so much and i was like but don't get mad because he he he, he has a sacrifice at the end. Calm right. down, like, just calm down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he'll he'll make amends. For his <laughs> and I I remember watching this and like I remember like being like shook and also being very worried that after that eye pop he was gonna like snap his neck or something. Yeah, because yes. it was really close, wasn't it? It was yes. like it it. it, it I don't know. That that did kind of raise the stakes, you know. This battle yeah. really did. Um, yeah. He got a cool eye patch out of it. I mean, yeah, I like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, even – and, like, the the scream that he does and the scream that Rona lets out, I think, are very, like, mm-hmm. good screams. Where yes. you're like, oh, mm-hmm. like, it, it, you, yeah. like, feel it a little, right? Fully committed. Yeah. 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 Summer, how do you, are you good at screaming? I know some, some actors can and some actors can't. I'm probably good at it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like, and now that I'm older, I'm like, I can't believe half the shit I was doing on The Magicians. <laughs> like, just half the shit. I couldn't do any of that now. Like, I'm so glad I was in my 20s for that. <laughs> I mean, now I would need like a whole team of people like after and like probably a therapy session. Like every time I had to like, do something like <laughs> like that <laughs> also like seeing xander lose his eye i'm like oh that happened to margo <laughs> you know and see and like yeah it it happened on season seven so he didn't have to wear a fucking eye patch for like the, his entire run <laughs> god that was a while that you had to wear that eye patch wasn't it <laughs> oh god yeah i mean and I, and then i just remember magali our costume designer was like so excited about these eye patches and i never had the heart to be like i can't actually see out of them (laughs) (laughs) it almost didn't matter either it was like girl do you want to be like 
fabulous or do you want to like see out of your eye patch? You know? <laughs> like, they were fancy. They were fancy eye patches. They, only like she could do. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we then are they escape and like it's it really is hard to be like uh, wow. they completely failed and they just have to like run wow. right. Yeah. <laughs> And we get we get Caleb's voiceover of him, uh, whatever she's. I, I don't know if he's like doing. <laughs> I, I, I'm bad at Bible stuff, so I'm like, is he doing like a play on the Bible? I don't know. Um, no, he like it, it's okay. I am good at Bible stuff. All right, hit it's us. Boilerplate <laughs> Bible shit. Okay, like dirty darkness. Like I wished it had come together more. Uh, I kept wishing that the monologue at the end said more about Buffy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, other than he wants to kill her because, you know, same right. shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you well, know, now that I you guess, said that, Monica, that's a, what I want too for that scene. Yeah. No, it's like, because the thing is, he was maybe one of the scarier villains the show has mm. had and definitely did the most damage. Yeah. But he was also just, I, I really hate serial killers. I mean, I don't know if anyone loves them, but you yeah, know. As I say. <laughs> but like, I, I hate the way people are like, they're so smart. They're not. They're just assholes. Yeah. And, he's such a fight. <laughs> and I was like, you're not smart. You just want to kill girls. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I hit, I hit <laughs> I know they're they're like glamorized. I got into the morbid podcast and I'm not uh, saying that they glamorize it or anything. I just like, I had so many nightmares for, I had to stop. Uh, Yeah. No, it's really, and it's, I, my old writing partner wrote a paper on, on serial killers and she listened to hours of tapes of them. And she's like, they are dumb misogynistic assholes. Yeah. They have no big plan. There's nothing really great motivating them. They just like to g- watch people hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so I, yeah. And so I think he kept talking, but I'm like, you just like hurting girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I like Monica. I like that. You're like, all right, just say, just say, you don't just say you want to kill girls. Just, just, just say just that. Say it. <laughs> I mean, enough with your biblical rationales. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> that's like when uh whenever someone's like oh i don't like you know and some of the negative reviews will be like ian talks like a very valley girl i'm like just say i'm a faggot like it's fine like just like just say that's what bothers you <laughs> <laughs> and now a fashion roundup for dirty girls with season seven costume designer matt van dyne hello matt well, hi. Hi, everybody, and Happy New Year, or we're going to make it a Happy New Year. I think, yes. Right? So, <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> How you been? How you been? Well, I'm good. How are you? Oh, all right. Getting getting started. We're we're at the end here. We're close to the end of uh, Buffy I Season 7. I see that, because is this episode 18, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah, wow, the, wow, wow. And these last, these last five are all one right after the other. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like reliving it. <laughs> you know, like all over again when I go back to these scripts and I look at it and I go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and then I remember like where we were in that time in the show, you know, we're like closing toward the end and we're thinking of the end in the way of what we know we have to do. But then we're also costuming these shows at the same time. So yeah. it's like it's it's interesting when I go back and look at my notes. I see in my notes or in my records, I should say, a lot of the clothing seems to have already been accrued uh, previously. Oh, that's funny. I was going to ask yes. you that. Yes. Yeah, I think I, I, I could because I'm looking, you know, in my records to see. Okay, this is what we bought for episode 18, and I'll look, but I can't really find that many pieces that relate to this episode because I watched them, you know, on on mm-hmm. my DVD or whatever that I have. And I, you know, every now and then I'll come up with something. Of course, like with this episode, we uh, are introduced to Faith So mm-hmm. for this season. So there are records of purchasing for her. You know, I, I see that, you know, okay. because obviously, you know, we didn't uh, have anything from earlier in the season for her right. because she wasn't on. But uh that that's a whole interesting thing you know like for me coming at her character i really didn't go back and see much of anything prior 
to okay. to uh, costuming her. So really, I what you see is basically my take on what that character is to to me, mm-hmm. and probably uh, what you know. I, I there was input from her, of course, but I'll I'll talk more about that at another time. But uh, but but for this, uh, I, yeah, it wasn't like oh, I'm going to copy what went before because. As I've said before, season seven, the way uh, we approached it or I approached it toward the end, was so different than previous seasons in the way of what the look of the show is in the way of the clothing. So, I, you know, for uh, the actress to come in, I don't know. She may have had a preconceived idea about what had been before, you know, from all yeah. the other seasons. But And we also are introduced to uh, Caleb, Nathan. Right. <laughs> and I... I Definitely remember fitting Nathan. I remember that so well. You know, and he was he was fun and playful in the fittings, and just you know ha- had personality to spare. He was just you know a very uh, you know fun loving guy. And I thought, wow, he's playing this really dark dark character. You know, after yeah. you know having read the script, and I still have my script by the way. I still have that from this season, and I, ha- I probably have. The, the original script and then the revised and all that. But, I love that you have all that shit. <laughs> I know I can't, but you know, you know what was funny too was I kept thinking, well, previously I wish actually I had done this earlier. I went back out into, you know, these storage bins and I went, well, here there's, there are tons more scripts in here. And I had other scripts that I didn't realize that I had. So, oh, so really? I, yeah. So, <laughs> so I still have a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, the scripts from the season seven, but with Caleb, I remember at the time I thought, well, he's a priest, but how's he going to do all this stuff? You know, like as a full throttled priest, you know, like, and I'm thinking of the robes and all that. And I do remember talking to Marty Knoxon about that. And, and then we both came up with, well, we'll just put him in, you know, the, the, the collar and, you know, the shirt, mm-hmm. but, you know, doing the jeans with it and all of that, the, you know, tucked in and all that, that was kind of something we, you know, I, I maybe, I guess I came up with. So, so I need to know, uh, was there ever like, so you, you, I wasn't asked if you had a different priest look, but so you were originally thinking more of like a robes and then you were like, well, that when I read the script, yes, yeah. I was like, but that's not going to play, you know, in the way of, you know, cause right. I knew that there was a lot of action coming up and I'm like, eh, I don't quite see it that way, and I so we. I thought, well, let's make him more hip, <laughs> than, <laughs> than, you know. But still, you know, as menacing and all of that, you know. So yeah. So you know, that was the idea of putting him in the Calvin Klein jeans and the, you know, distressed kind of looking jeans and all that, you know. And those, those, uh, you know, I, I have a record of you know having purchased multiples for him because there were stunts, you know, all these things that were yeah. going on in this episode and this episode is the episode with the wine cellar, correct? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Well, I, I definitely remember seeing, you know, the script and going, oh my God, they're throwing <laughs> wine everywhere? <laughs> because that, I mean, you know, I knew, you know, and production doesn't like it when an episode costs a lot of money, but, <laughs> you know, I tell them, well, then tell the writers not to write things like, you know, food fights or, you know, because, you know, you have to have multiples. So I knew for every person, you know, when, when all the potentials go, you know, back to fight, you know, in the wine cellar, I thought, well, they all have to have multiples. And as I recall, we had six changes for, I think it was at least six for every character. So. And there are a lot of people in this episode. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, you know, that adds up, you know, it's like, you know, and a, and a lot of those clo- clothes, I, I looked back, I did a lot of it because you want to be able to, you know, uh, this, you know, may sound, I don't know, too, you know, like uh, in the business, you know, that kind of thing. But hit me. I uh, love when you sound very in the business. <laughs> well, but, but when you when you see that, uh, that you have to have multiples like that, you have to have uh, access to clothing where you can get those multiples because you know, not every boutique is a boutique will not have that. They just won't have, you know, uh, right. six the sizes, the, the six and the six of the same. They won't have the sizes. 
and all that. So that took a lot of uh, uh, planning and working with my shopper, uh, Lorna, who uh, we would, you know, order ahead, you know, if, uh, if we found something and if we knew we would ha- have it shipped in from, say, another Macy's or whatever to mm. to fill it to fill out what we needed, you know, for that episode. So, yeah, and I noticed in in my script, I must have asked at the production meeting, "What are we using for wine?" And I wrote <laughs> food coloring. So, so I guess that's what they use because that, that's what's in my script. I mean, that's so it's just I, like that's water with food coloring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. that's what my note says. So, but even still, that's not going to wash out. So, right. you know? yeah. So, you know, whatever is you know used is probably going to be destroyed. You know, by the action and the you know the the bursting of the wine, uh, yeah. the you know the barrels of wine and all that. So, and that <laughs> is a violent fight. I was watching. It, it is. Was like, Whoa, <laughs> you know. And I was thinking to myself, I was kind of surprised uh, when Sarah. I love that outfit she's wearing that she goes. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I love that outfit. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of surprised because I thought, well, that's that. I remember that was an expensive little outfit, you know. So mm. we did that in multiples, and uh, so <laughs> so uh, I guess that's where a lot of the money for that, that episode went to was to Sarah because uh, <laughs> you know that that was not a cheap outfit. But I, but I love that outfit, and I thought it played well in the scene. I had some other notes for some of the other characters. Uh, a lot of uh, Faith's uh, wardrobe came from pretty high-end stores, actually. Edgier kind of clothing, you know, from Diesel, mm-hmm. okay. uh, Dolce & Gabbana. Uh, there was really? some of that. Um, so she had some good stuff, you know, Bloomingdale's, you know, a lot of sacks, you know. But but I laugh to myself when I uh, when I see denim jackets now because you've made me aware that there are a lot of denim, denim jackets. <laughs> and, Listen, I love them, Matt. I love them. I, I guess we did too. You know, because, <laughs> because and I'm not exactly sure why that that is the case, but except that they were in style, you know, at the time. Yeah. So that was probably a lot of it. And I did have a note for um, Anthony uh, okay. uh, Giles. Uh, that uh, his gray shirt, it was an Armani shirt that came from Saks Fifth Avenue. And uh, the little black T-shirt underneath was uh, James Purse, which is a great T-shirt. They always fit so well. And I always think, I always love his clothes. I think he just looks, you know, really, really kind of uh, upscale and uh, learned and, you know, like the character and all that, you know, you know, very, very intelligent. Well, it's funny. We we talk a lot on the podcast about how, when we were teens watching it, it was like, oh, Giles is like the older dad. But now as an adult, it's like, ooh, he is a handsome dad. <laughs> yeah, so now he's on Ted Lasso. So. Yes. <laughs> which which uh, gave me a kick when I was watching it. I was watching it with my mother, and, and, I, and uh, I, I said, first I'm like, who is that? And I went, oh, well, that's Anthony, you know, and then I, <laughs> I shared with her that I knew who he was, you know, and, you know, that I used to dress him. That was kind of fun. Is your mom just kind of used to you always being like, oh, I dressed that person. I think she, I think she is. She'll go, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, I know. Because there's so many. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I just, I, I watch and go, oh, yeah, I did that. Or I did that. Oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> 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 it's very fun, and then one of the one of the things that gave me a thrill in this episode is just a little thing. Is um, oh shoot, I blanked. Tom Lanks, car- Andrew, right? Mm-hmm. Andrew, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, when he does the uh, thing about the Vulcan. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I got a thrill at the time out of being able to make you know somebody look like you know Doctor or Mister Spock, not Doctor. Oh right, right. Mr. You Spock. went to yes. <laughs> So did you not? Did you not rent that? Was that like you made no, that? No, we made that. I made that. I got the fabric. Uh, it's a blue velvet. I remember. I got the fabric and had a fake logo made for it. <laughs> and uh, his boots. I thought I laughed when I saw that his boots were they're made by Coach and they they were uh, from Macy's, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they were the right kind of boot for for what he needed. But I even had a sketch of of, of that outfit because. You know, but that was a thrill for me, having been a Star Trek yeah. fan, you know, for years. You know, when I was a little kid, 
and I'd come home from school after school and watch uh, in syndication the Star Trek episodes, and yeah. and then years later to get to you know actually create one of them. I thought, <laughs> well, that was a thrill for me. That really was. Is that something that like you probably wouldn't have been allowed to rent the outfit? Um, well, there probably yeah probably not. I mean, you couldn't have you couldn't use the actual. Right, you know, because they would, you know, so you know, change the fab- fabrication a little bit, and I didn't change the the fit of her, the style, basically, mm-hmm. but but just you know enough to make it, you know, suggesting, you know, what. It, <laughs> what so when when Eliza Dushu and Nathan Fillion, since you know they don't appear till this episode, right, and then right. they're in it for the rest, uh huh. Did you did you have to like? Were you still doing it episode by episode, or did you kind of like pick out a lot of their stuff? I mean, he kind of wears the same thing. Yes, that's true. He does. He wears pretty much the same thing. But uh, for Eliza, uh, I when I look at the notes, I do see a lot of clothing in the records that mm-hmm. don't appear in this episode. So they must appear later. Okay. As I'm thinking that they they will appear later. And uh, was this the episode that she's wearing? Let's see, what's she wearing? I'm getting mixed up a little bit there. So, uh, well, my other my other question was going to be: Did you buy? Are they different denim jackets, or is it the same denim? There jacket are different wears? denim jackets. Funny okay. question. Yes, uh, <laughs> one of them was a Dolce and Gabbana, and uh, one of them is, I think, Diesel. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, yes, but they were different. There are different ones because I, I see them in in my records. That it'll be more than one. Yeah. Um, Studded belt, low song jean. Oh yeah, I like the studded belt. I remember looking at that on camera. And I, where'd you Where'd you get that from? I was wondering. Oh, I wish I knew. I I, I, oh, okay. I, didn't see, I didn't see it in my notes. Now that may appear later on, and I can refer back to it. Because I was going to ask if it was from Hot Topic or somewhere. Because that's like you know that's that's the place that sold them. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that right off. It hmm. might be because 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 we did shop there a little bit, but. Um, but I, I, yeah, I liked, I liked her look. I thought she looked the way, you know, that I wanted her to look. I'm not well, sure. <laughs> and it's crazy that you didn't look back at her old looks because I felt like you did a very good job of. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, I really didn't. I didn't look backwards. But, but in the episode, as we, as you know, there's the flashback thing about you mm-hmm. know who she was and all of that. But I didn't really see that see until you know after the fact. So. <laughs> so I, yeah, I just thought, well, okay, based on what I know, you know, from what the script tells me about the character, you know, you know, I, yeah. I knew a little bit from having worked on the show, you know, I knew a little bit, but, uh, mm. but yeah, it was, uh, it was just, uh, you know, I wanted her to be different, my version of different, I guess, you know, so yeah, from Sarah and the other girls and all of that. So, well, I, I think it's a great, like, it's still fits her look but is like a more she's like a little bit more adult now so it makes sense that's like just a it's like update but like still in the vein of her yeah yes and, and and wasn't this the episode with the the, the dream sequence with the, the girls no that's is that is that a different episode wait is that this episode i, I feel think, like it's a different I, I think it's this episode isn't it sexy girls yeah yeah it is this episode I think. is it this episode yeah dirty girls yeah right with, uh, the dream sequence and that was funny when i uh <laughs> I, I that brought back memories you know i remember oh well yes i have to dress all of these girls and a lot of it was uh men's underwear that was really yes that was funny <laughs> that we i uh, purchased at nordstrom you know and i dressed <laughs> them kind of in sexy men's underwear to make them because a little different than you know uh something you know cliche i guess right know? yeah yeah because yeah, it's right. a dream so you got a dream yeah yeah, yeah. We're like what, what's he dreaming you know <laughs> so the crazy i don't know if you know this but the crazy part is that that first slayer girl that we don't see again we only oh, see yeah. in the dream right 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 and i do it's rachel what? bilson yeah is that who that is oh mm-hmm. my gosh From the OC. yeah <laughs> oh my gosh is that right <laughs> <laughs> and like she's not in any other episode but she's that dream not. scene <laughs> yeah and that is a that's a creepy scene where she's yeah. you know oh yeah yeah dark dark <laughs> but yeah yeah i do remember her i remember but her. so so the, the, the other question i had was so you have, buffy and faith are almost a little dressed alike when they first meet was that on purpose 
Probably. I don't remember, you know, making them look exactly alike. I don't mm-hmm. I hope not. No, but, no, no. But um but probably yes, probably to you know, because they're both the slayer, you know, and all that. Yeah. So uh yeah, yeah, you know, not but yeah, probably so, yes. Well, also I'm happy to know that Nathan Fillion is just as charming as he seems. Oh, he, he seems is, he is. I just thought he was a hoot. I liked him very much. <laughs> And, and of course, I was thinking about all those bringers. We built those too, you know, made all that. So, you know, I have bought, bought a lot of fabric, you know, to to build their um, their costumes for that. So, I assume you had a lot of that to do towards the end of the season. Yes, here. I, I mean, this was a huge episode. This particular yeah. episode, it, it was a huge episode. And th- this and this is the episode. Isn't Faith working out in the yard there or something? And, Drawstring pants, I believe. Yeah, I believe maybe. That. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I remember. And I found those pants. Yeah, those were theory pants. We bought them at Bloomingdale's. They were uh, eighty-one dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but she had a good wardrobe. I mean, she, she, um, you know, she. We had. I, I spent a lot of money on her. You know, it was. Yeah, it was good stuff. But yeah, but I was looking at like Willow's outfit, and I, I, I remember that very well. I remember her little cord jacket with the pockets and. Uh, all of that and uh, uh, the little striped shirt and the skirt that that came from uh, Nordstrom Free People, I think was the name of the line. Okay, yeah, I do. I remember that. You remember that? Yeah. Yes, and, I and you know, I, and I, you know, I kept her palette, you know, kind of in that that rust and autumn yeah. uh, earth, you know, kind of earth, like witchy, yeah, yeah. Uh huh, witchy thing. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I always wondered. Um, so she goes to she goes to get faith. Right. And that's on an angel episode that, that oh, happens. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. See, I didn't see that. Okay. And so I always wondered if like, did I give her clothing she, for that? <laughs> well, the weird part is she wears her and faith are wearing different outfits. They leave angel and then they're wearing different <laughs> outfits when they get to. Sunnydale. <laughs> I guess they change clothes then. <laughs> right. I guess that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, the shows were on different networks at that point. It was a big deal that they let them even. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, over. it's funny. You know, somebody contacted me this week uh, from France. Uh, there are a lot mm. of fans over there. And uh, they were asking me a question about a character on Angel. And I, I, I'm I, not that familiar yeah. with that show. But I said it was like it was the creation of this this outfit for this one character. and I. I said, well, interestingly enough, I said, I did not work on that show, but I worked in the same building where the seamstress who worked on that show had a little Mm -hmm. office downstairs. And I said, she would be there in the morning when I came in. I was doing another big show at Paramount. She'd be there in the morning when I came in, and then she would be there when I left late in the evening. That poor woman, they they must have worked her fingers to the bone. Because yeah. uh, she and she made all that stuff, a lot of that stuff. So, uh, yes. and it was like a one woman deal there. You know, she was the, she was it. But that's funny. They they had different clothes when they. Well, that should that well that no wasn't given to me. So, you know <laughs> about you know what they left. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. I, I guess it probably was just the show's not you know the network's not wanting to yeah, share that, any outfits. That could be. That could be. Yeah, you would think. But I do remember, well, that'll be later on when Angel comes to the yeah. last episode of our show, you know, he brought something to wear oh, okay. that, that came from that show. So, All right, Matt. Well, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> a pleasure, you. as always. <laughs> as always, it's a pleasure to talk to all of you. And thank you all for, for being interested in listening. And we'll talk to you next time, okay? Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, and now we will do our closing statements, favorite outfit of the episode. Summer? I have to go with that, like, camel leather jacket that Buffy was wearing. Like, anytime she's in, like, that 90s leather jacket look, I'm happy. It's (laughs) cute, right? It's so cute. I love 90s leather jackets. (laughs) <laughs> I was, I was, so I'm not as into, I'm more of like, Ooh, I like that. But I don't, I wasn't, I was wondering if that was called because it has like puffy, but not really puffy yeah. sleeves. Like, yeah, it's a whole cute. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was your favorite outfit, Monica? Um, I like faith in the tank top and jeans cause she looks good in red. And 
It yeah. was, a, it was topless next to her. And I thought, <laughs> and as an accessory to a look, <laughs> topless wasn't bad. So um. I, I would, I would love a topless spike as my accessory. Zach, what was your favorite outfit? Is Faith in the same outfit the entire episode? I think, uh, I think so. Yeah. They didn't the give her any clothes. Comes- I know. Yeah. It's like, where, where was the wardrobe budget? For Buff, a Buffy gets two outfit changes in this one. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, well, I, I like Faith's, but just for, for our girl, Molly, I'll give it to Molly. <laughs> oh, all right, yeah. I, I got to say, my, mine is I love both Faith and Buffy's outfits when they go to fight at the end. Like, I, oh. Faith, I, you're right, Monica. She looks good. Like, just give her a basic tank top and like tight pants. She looks great. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm 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 a sucker for a denim jacket, so I love mm-hmm. slayers in a denim jacket. I just love all of Buffy's pieces in this season. I even like when she's at, as the first with the little purple top. Yeah. Like yeah. that's so okay. good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, favorite scene, Monica. Same spike in the basement, topless. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just I just love seeing them together. I can't believe it's the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it just, they both felt really lifted. And I just love that they both understood each other mm-hmm. in a way that other characters don't understand them. So um, that was my right. favorite. It really, Spike really did like immediately understand her, right? Mm-hmm. It, yeah. I mean, that probably was part of the chemistry. Uh, Summer, what's your favorite scene? I'm just thinking they would have been such an iconic duo. Like, I yeah. can't believe they waited that long to explore it. Do you wait? So, before, real quick, before you say your favorite scene, Summer, I don't know if any of you remember, there was like all those rumors that, like, if there was a Spike spinoff, or if there was a Faith spinoff, it was going to have like Spike as a ghost, like, with but her. then why did they put Faith and Angel in the comics together, too? Yeah. Wait, I, I do like those comics, though. I thought that was the best of the comics. Was but the come on, you know. <laughs> Zach's not having it. No, I'm not. I don't like Angel. I'm not an Angel fan. <laughs> I, can't wait to, I can't wait to cover Angel with you. <laughs> He's so whiny. He is. It's like, get over it, dude. <laughs> That's <Summer>. so though. <laughs> All right, some of our favorite scene. I would have to say the one where we see Angel and Spike together. Like, if I really have to think about it, because it, it has oh, never happened. Faith and, yeah, Faith, so, and Spike. Yeah. Faith and Spike, yeah. I was like, wait, what did I miss? You're like, Angel, what? <laughs> uh, Zach, favorite scene? Uh, Buffy and Faith's walk while they're, they're spying and following the bringer. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Zach, like that's that my one. favorite scene, too. Oh, my goodness. Tweets. Yeah, which would be tied for I do like the battle. Even though I hate seeing them fail, I think it's like one of the- There's like, not first... enough Slayer 1-2 kick punch for me. I need a little that's bit fair. more. That's fair. Uh, what grade would we give this episode? Uh, Summer? Mm, I would give it a C just because I'm bitter about the I. <laughs> I'm over identifying. <laughs> that to be a Comic Con panel of people in genre shows who've had to wear eye patches yeah. for season. Yeah. They downvote yeah. the hell out of this episode. <laughs> I've never removed an eye, but I've removed hands from people many times. Ah. <laughs> Monica, what grade do you give the episode? I. I'm going to split. It's a B. Okay. All right. Uh, Zach? I'm going to do an A minus. It's Faith. It's yeah. Faith. You know, <laughs> she right. just Faith steals it. We, and we get so many flashbacks yeah. of her, too. Like, that immediately elevates it up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I got to say an A, too. I, I think the I hate seeing them fail. I do hate seeing, like, Xander did his eye poked out, but it's all, like, really good. And mm-hmm. I just... I think Faith is like very much a breath of fresh air into the season. And like, I like seeing her navigate these relationships and I don't know. I I hate that they didn't put, bring her back in sooner. Like a yeah. season five okay. Faith would have been great. And then by season seven, nobody would be talking about Faith in her murderous right. past. Right. It'd like, be fine. <laughs> it, it, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. They would have been like, eh, whatever. Like we got over that already because she was here, right? And I mean, she could have helped with Glory, right? They fought her could have, I could have seen okay. Faith crying over Buffy laying there too. Like that yeah. would have been heartbreaking. Yeah. Zach and I often do rewrites, so this is like our favorite thing to oh, do yeah. together. Oh yeah, it's it's <laughs> very fun. Uh, okay, well, 
Thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for listening. Uh, if you like Slayer Fest 98, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. And if you want to follow us on social media, we are on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SlayerFestX98. And if you want to support the podcast, we are on Patreon. Any and all support is much appreciated. We are covering, uh, we'll be soon starting our coverage of Harley Quinn Season 2 and What If over at the Patreon. And you can listen to me and Zach. Uh, what, are, what are we calling it now, Zach? On which one? What are we doing? <laughs> my, my nudie Judy. My nudie Judy. <laughs> is it just uh it's like our sex talk show right yeah, but it's, uh, it's it's yeah sex and relationship uh yeah talk yeah. show i guess um and also you can find me and zach uh on my bloody judy which will be on a new platform soon enough yeah um and if you want to follow me on social i am at ian x carlos zach where can everyone find you uh, adventures of zach and b on everything and monica where can everyone find you monica at monica with super Ian on my insta and summer um, at Summary Bishel on my Insta and at Summer Bishel one on my Twitter because apparently someone else got Summer Bishel. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's the only reason it's Slayerfest X ninety eight in all social media because Slayerfest ninety eight was taken everywhere, yeah. so just throwing the X. Yeah. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for listening. Uh, we are very close to being done season seven. I'll see you next time. Bye, bye everyone. Bye.